greetings and welcome. Uh, for the few of you who don't already know who I am, I'm Diane Mendez, and I welcome you to my home and the third in our series of occasional salons featuring artists, collectors, friends, and interesting people. I launched this salon series last fall in memory of the many wonderful art gatherings and charity events that my late husband and I hosted here over the years. I've known Emily for more than 20 years and have delighted in seeing her work steadily evolve over the years while maintaining a consistent interest in exploring the visual relationships between color and planes in both her abstract and landscape work. Without further ado, I'm happy to introduce Emily Fuller. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to give you a sort of a, a way through my work from when I started after I left the Boston Museum School. And I'll just start out by saying that I was born in New York City, and I was brought up in the suburban north shore of Long Island. Uh, I was sent away to boarding school for high school, and it was there uh, at Oldfield School in Maryland that I learned to paint in oil paint. Um, I was really pretty uh, an indifferent student, uh, except in art, and so I ended up at Garland Junior College in Boston, and they have a program where every incoming freshman must take sewing class and make a bathrobe. So I did that. <laughs> I did that, and I liked sewing so much that I uh, took a second year of sewing. And, uh, and then after that, I applied to the Boston Museum School. And I was accepted there because I had a pretty good portfolio. And, uh, and then I, while I was at the Boston Museum School, I went to Tufts University and got my BS in, in education. Um, when I got to New York uh, after I graduated, uh, I uh, eventually, I worked, of course. We all have to work. And I worked in the Museum of Modern Art. And I uh, decided I needed to go back to school to sort of have a little hand-holding. So I went to the Art Students League on 57th Street. And I started making these paintings that were stain paintings, uh, you know, on raw canvas a la Helen Frankenthaler. I don't know if any of you know uh, Helen Frankenthaler, but she was a very influential and successful artist uh, in the 60s and, and beyond, actually. So most of my work was taken from nature uh, and abstracted in this kind of stain technique. Um, and then uh, when I got married, I moved, uh, we moved to what is now called Northwest Tribeca. I had my son uh, and in 1972, and unfortunately my husband died of cancer at the age of 35. And so, but after he died, uh, I had already had one show at uh, 75, uh, 55 uh, Mercer Street. And um, in 1972, I started sewing my artwork. And uh, I sewed uh, pieces of canvas that were maybe this thick, but wide, and this wide, and this wide. And I would have one horizontal, uh, sorry, one vertical on one side or on two sides, <clears throat> and I would stretch them. And I, the work attracted some attention. And the, that work was really sort of motivated by my looking at uh, Jasper John's maps. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with uh, art history and Jasper John's, but he made these uh, maps of the US and also maps of the world. And I saw them when I was working in the Museum of Modern Art and, and they made quite an influence on me. <laughs> so so I, I really liked them. 
And I could get up in the morning and look out the window and see the water and see New Jersey, and I'd think, oh, well, this is a good day or a bad day. And I'd start painting depending on the color uh, of what it was like, you know, in the sky and the pollution and everything. So another person that I was influenced by was Nancy Graves, who did very organic work. Um, she's, uh, she did camels. She made these camels, which she showed at the Whitney Museum, which were quite something. And then she went into dot paintings. Um, and also uh, Henri Matisse, the fauve uh, painter, was another person that I uh, admired a, a great deal. Uh, around that time, I purchased a Singer sewing machine with a table, and I started sh sewing um, plastic sheeting, and there, there are some pictures of these in this book here that you can look at later. And I filled the plastic sheets, they became bags, and I would connect them one to another with paint powder and flour, and I would cut the paint powder with, with flour. And, uh, Anyway, then I began, after that, all this stuff was flying around in the air. And so I, I the, then we get to this, this piece here. This is an early piece, uh, the paper pieces. And you can see that I'm using the sewing machine line here to designate a certain design. And I also was very influenced by uh, Frank Stella's work, of course, and I, I would sew these pieces together on the sewing machine, and what I would do is, is make a, a section, and then I'd put another piece smaller over that section. So you have, you have this outside piece here, and then you have this piece that's smaller in the middle. And then eventually I would sew it all together, and I would mark. So these are marks, or what we call scarification, you know, uh, when you scar something, it gets d darker, um, and that's how some of this is uh, developed here. So what are these marks? Um, oh, well, first of all, I used, to make these marks, I used sculpture tools and wood cutting tools and other things that I could find. Um, and basically, I, I was concerned because there was, you know, I'd blow my nose and all this brown stuff would come out after I made something like this. So I thought, ah! So uh, I decided uh, to, uh, because of the danger of metal floating around in the air, I switched to using tragican gum. Now tragican gum is a binder and it's very good for binding, a, a, say, acrylic paint. And this is one of my later pieces um, here. And this piece is a window with shutters on either side. And you can see the back of it. It's all sewn together. And I, I did quite a few of these. And I, I kind of got exhausted from doing them. And <laughs> Uh, I decided to make a print, and this was the first print that I made. Again, uh, this is a, lith a lithograph, and again, I applied the same technique for sewing to the print. I actually had a portable sewing machine that my mother gave me, and I took it to the press, and when they printed this, uh, they would, they would, had, they had two uh, stones, the background stone, which is this, this green here, and then they had the other stone, which had these marks on them, which is what you see here. And, they, and then the, the assistants would rip them, and I would sew, and you can see these are all sewn. And then uh, at the same time, I was making uh, pieces with canvas. And these pieces, I made a whole series of these. And these are also sewn. And I use glue uh, to mark. Now, what are the symbols that I marked? This is a symbol for trees, okay? 
Here's another one with another symbol for trees. I spent about four summers in Nova Scotia around this time, and uh, there are a lot of fir trees there. <laughs> so uh, now, explain, to explain how I got these, uh, I, again, this is all sewn in the back, as you can see. And so I would paint this panel red, OK? And then I put gel on it, thickening agent, it's called gel, acrylic gel, and I painted the gray over it, and then I went in here with a uh, palette knife. So that's, so what are the other marks? Some of the other marks are animal tracks, uh, garden, you know, like if you have a garden, and, and when I grew up, uh, there was a, a vegetable garden, you know, I grew up with a vegetable garden, my parents had one, and so rows and rows of lettuce, tomatoes, squash, you know. So some of these things are, and also animal tracks. Animal tracks, whether they're in the snow or on, in the mud, yeah, is part of it too. The, the more recent uh, pieces of these, these were done in the early 80s. Um, some of them are subway windows. I spent a lot of time in New York, riding the subway. Because of, of the success of this print, uh, there was a very nice lady who uh, was sort of like an art angel, and she enjoyed helping artists. And she saw this print, and she said to me, would you like, I will pay for a print if you would like to make another one. And so I said, great, that's wonderful. Could I make two? And uh, I don't have the prints with me because they're, uh, it's a, I have two of them framed and they're, it's a heavy uh, frame. But one was orange and one was uh, 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 blue. And the blue one is in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art right now. And, and also one of these paper pieces is in the collection of the drawing department at the Modern too. Um, so anyway, I got out of this area, and, and really between 1987 and 1998 was a, a period of experimentation. And I made sculpture, uh, wooden sculpture. Uh, ha uh, I, I used to go to the, muse the Met and uh, uh, look at the reliquaries. You know, you have these. 15th century, 14th century reliquaries in the uh, in the uh, in that part of the museum, and they all had, you know, all this sort of filigree and you know angels and the Virgin and all that stuff rising. Well, so I made little houses of wood, and I put uh, kind of paper in in the houses, and uh, and color and. And that, that was another, uh, that was another uh, area of experimentation. But what I did was it's very important, I thought, to be able to make realistic work. My skill was not good at making realistic work. So I decided to go back at night again, because I was working during the day. I decided to go back to the School of Visual Arts. And um, I took a course with uh, John Parks, an English uh, artist who lives here in, in America. And he was a great teacher. And uh, I gained, it took me about a year and a half, two years, to gain some skill in making realistic work, which is primarily what I do now. Um, I ended up renting a house up in Millbrook, uh, Amenia, Millerton area of New, of New York State. I don't know if you all know that. It's, it's in the northeast part of Dutchess County. And I started to paint the landscape. For example, like this is an example, a small painting. 
most of my paintings are much larger, but size is, uh, this, this is a painting that I did. I also did some pieces that are, these are oil on paper, again, of the same area. Um, there are mountains up there, but they've been so worn down that uh, they don't look, they're just hill ridges going north and south right now. Um, and then for the last two years, I've been working on oils of running water, which I just love painting water. It's just wonderful. And I was just, uh, I just went to visit a friend in Cartagena, Colombia, and she lives in a high rise and I'm looking down at this water on the beach going in and out and it was just fabulous. I really got involved in it. What I've been doing most recently, besides painting these during the season from April until October, during the winter I've been doing this kind of thing, these kind of collage uh, pieces. And this, this sort of harks back to uh, my abstract work with uh, texture and uh, line. This is a symbol for a tree. Uh, and then here I've, I've done a series of these. Uh, this is, and by the way, while I work on these landscapes, I always take photographs and I'm always photographing the area. And this is a temple building uh, built around 1839 in Smithfield, uh, New York. And again, this has sewing in it and it has marked uh, there are marks in here that symbolize trees. And uh, again, here's another one, uh, you know, where I have marked, again, the paper, scarred the, the paper, and this kind of thing. And these are photographs. So, so that's what I'm doing in the wintertime.